What's up guys, Yale Greenfield, AK The Live King, back with another episode of the Poker Vlog. You can see behind me, we've got mountains, we've got snow. That means we're not in Los Angeles anymore. We're at a new location. This is Blackhawk, Colorado, located approximately 45 to 50 minutes outside of Denver. First off, I wanna thank Monarch Casino. They are allowing me to film poker vlogs, and this is a beautiful property. Monarch has an award-winning steakhouse, beautiful rooms, an amazing casino floor. This is the preeminent place to play poker or do any gambling or eating in Blackhawk. This is the absolute spot. Now, 510 only runs on the weekends, typically Friday and Saturday. Otherwise, I've been just enjoying myself in Denver, trying to get into a little bit of the outdoors life, try to push myself into that. It's not something that like I do a lot of. They've got beautiful creeks, a little bit of hiking, all the picturesque beauty you could hope for. In addition to that, I've been to a Denver Nuggets game. It was Nuggets versus Lakers. I'm a huge NBA fan, had great seats, went with a couple of friends. Lakers suck right now, but always good to see LeBron and Jokic. Otherwise, if you can, smash that subscribe button. I am here today to try to grind hours. 510 runs on the weekends. It's a 5K cap. I'll probably buy in for 2K, my normal 200 big blinds. We're gonna go in there, try to get a little bit of action, check it out, get a vibe, and I'll let you guys know what I'm seeing from Blackhawk. Very first hand in the $20 straddles on, we got pocket cowboys facing a $75 under the gun open from a recreational player, and we make it $260. It's a little bigger than I would normally go. Here's what I can tell you about this under the gun opener. He's a recreational player who limps quite a bit. I've got about 10 hours of play with him, and I think he's got a really good hand in this spot. I think I could actually justify going a little bit bigger here sometimes, but he does put in the call. Looking for a really good flop, and oh no, we get the dreaded ace high board holding pocket kings. And now the recreational player does something a little odd. He leads $275 into us. Now again, this guy's pretty passive, and while it doesn't make a ton of sense, my read here is that he just has an ace quite a bit. So I go ahead and put the hand in the muck, and he flashes us ace queen off. That's a better hand than pocket kings. For top two pair. Wow, so we get off cheap in this very first hand at the Monarch. This hand's gonna start out with an exposed card. The king of spades flips over. And now for the big reveal, we got 10 nine of hearts. 60. 60. We raised it up to $60 under the gun with a $20 straddle on. The cutoff's gonna call. He is a gregarious, tricky, intelligent businessman. Pretty tough to play against. Big blind's gonna come along as well. He's our opponent from the prior hand where we folded pocket kings. Three ways to an ace high board with two hearts. So we have a four flush and it's checked to us. 90. I go ahead and opt for a bet of $90. I think this is about as small as I'd like to go when betting. Cutoff's gonna call and so is the big blind. I think our small bet can keep them relatively wide and we get a two of clubs turn. Another check by the big blind. Now we've got a pretty big decision point. Do we wanna fire a 10 high flush drawn to two opponents? My thinking is this board is really good for us. So I go ahead and bet $350. I think this is about as small as I'd ever wanna go here. I could see something closer to pot, maybe even over pot occasionally. Now the cutoff is deep in the tank. This guy sometimes tries to pull some pretty crazy moves. So he could have devious ideas here. I'm trying to use my tight image to take the pot down right here, right now. And as he reaches for chips, he does put in the call. And the big blind gets out of the way. So we're gonna go heads up to this river. And it's a three of diamonds, 1175 in the middle. And I flick out a 1K chip, hoping so badly that this guy folds. He's not an easy guy to move off hands. And he shows a three of hearts face up and folds his hand. You're supposed to have another three and just snap me off. I king, I king three of hearts. I believe that. So we get a nice bluff through on hand number two. 
This hand occurs exactly two deals after the prior hand. We got Jack-10 offsuit in the big blind. There is no straddle on in this hand. Hijack's open to $35. Button's gonna come along. He's been in each of the first two hands. Small blind calls and so do we, so it's a four-way pot. Flops queen, nine, five, two spades. We got an open-ended straight draw. We check it. And it checks all the way the button who bets just $50. That's a small size for this guy. He's usually a big pounder. Small blind folds, and given this size, I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on. I raised to 250. Pretty good semi-bluffing combo, but do expect that the button's gonna call a fair bit when it's folded back to him. Super draw heavy board, and he can of course have hands like weak top pair, or my read could just be awful and he might just have a good hand. He puts in the call. Seven of clubs turn, so now it's a double flush draw board. We unblock everything, and we've got some outs to the nuts. I opt for a bet of 425. We made a huge bluff just two hands prior, and now we're out here running it again. Thinking this pretty long tank from the button could be an indication of weakness if he doesn't raise. And he doesn't, he's just gonna put in the call here. Would love a red king or a red eight, but we get a red deuce instead. We got 1490 in the middle, and we've got a bit of a decision. So we've got about 1700 behind after we check the stacks. 900? I go for a bet of $900. So what I was trying to decide here on the river as I took my time was do I want to go all in, or do I just want to give myself a little bit of a better price on a bluff? In this instance, all spade draws are pretty much going to be forced to fold and miss clubs. If he had a hand like King Jack of Clubs or King Jack of Spades, he would also be forced to fold for this 900 size. I actually hate this bet in hindsight. I think it's an error I often make. I think I just need to go for it and put all 1700 in here, apply max pressure to top pair hands, even hands like King Queen or Queen Jack. But here we are, we bet $900 into 1490, and the button is really considering his options here. And he does eventually decide to fold. So back-to-back -back bluffs getting through here. Today we've been all about the bluff life. However, I'd like to get some value to make things a little bit easier. And right on cue, we've got pocket aces in middle position. We raise it to 90 over one limper. Low jack calls. Cutoff's gonna call. So is the button. Big Blind's peeling his cards like he's maybe considering a raise, but does just call and so does the limper. So we've got five opponents here trying to run down our red aces. Check. Oh, over here. It's queen high with two diamonds, very wet board, straight draws and flush draws available. So when they checked us, I think we just want to make some kind of bet. I bet 200, which I think is a little small, maybe something like 250 or 275 could be better. The cutoff's gonna call and everybody else is gonna fold. Four diamonds turn means seven five comes in, tons of flushes, we're beat by a lot of stuff, so we check now, and the cutoff bet's $200. Pocket aces is a clear continue, and it's not good enough to raise, so we call. Six of hearts on the river, so we've got aces and sixes. We check, and the cutoff flips over queen jack offsuit very quickly. I lost the minimum. And our aces and sixes beats his queens and sixes. This hand's gonna feature a $20 button straddle from a new player to the table who's an absolute maniac. We get pocket aces just 20 minutes after our previous pocket aces. Under the gun limps, we raise to $100. Fully expecting that the button is gonna call. He's playing approximately 90% of hands or so. He calls, and under the gun is gonna call as well. It's a 10 9 2 all heart flop. We got the ace of hearts in hand. Under the gun checks, we check quickly, and so does the button. Three of clubs on the turn. And when under the gun checks, I think it's time to start going for value. We bet 175. Button calls. I think we're ahead nearly always. Seven of clubs river doesn't really complete much. Only jack eight, mostly. Not many two pairs. Time for a value bet, and it's gonna be 350. Button beats us into the pot. 
he mucks his hand. So Ace is working in back-to-back -back hands against a guy playing nearly every single hand. You absolutely love to see it. Instead of a $10 big blind or a $20 straddle, in this hand, it's bonkers. It's a $50 button straddle. We've moved from the three seat to the nine seat. There's two limps in front of us. We're in low jack with pocket nines and raise it to 225. Never expecting the button to fold here. He of course puts in the call because, well, he's playing 90% of hands and he thinks he's on a mega rush. First limper calls and so does the second one. We're gonna need a good flop to beat three opponents here with nearly $1,000 in the middle. And oh my God, top set on a two club, one spade board that also contains a straight. Both players check and I think here, we wanna make a decent sized bet because so many draws are available and frankly, the button doesn't seem to wanna fold ever. So we bet 500. On me? Yes, sir. Button puts in the call. One pair, no good. Now he's speech playing me in a four-way pot, telling me that one pair is no good. But we don't have one pair. Of course, we've got top set. The first limper does fold, and now the second one, the under the gun one player, goes all in for $1,380. Now we got the action back on us, and it's just a decision between a call or an all-in. Looks like 1380. There is a lot to protect against. Flush draws, some straight draws, and the button is also a pretty big gambler. I'd also like to note, we should go back to his speech play. In my experience, when people say one pair no good in a multi-way pot, they're simply trying to slow you down and typically aren't all that strong. So he's most likely to have a draw in this situation, in my opinion. Oh. So we go Rip City all in, $4,400, and an instant fold from the button. 10 of hearts on the turn, and an eight of spades on the river, so any seven makes a straight, and the under the gun one player reveals pocket jacks. She slow played pocket jacks, and we were able to outflop her and win a 4100 in $75 pot. About an hour and a half has passed since the last hand. Here we've got an under the gun limp and a $75 open and look at this. Pocket aces for the third time and we're gonna shoot it up to $260. I'm pretty excited when the player to my right opens to $75 because she's pretty passive. So I'm hoping she's got a really big hand and we can play a monster here. And shockingly, the hijack cold calls. Now the hijack is the guy that we've been battling all day. We successfully bluffed him when we had Jack 10. We also correctly folded pocket kings to his flop top two. So we've pretty much had the best of him all day. Now he's cold calling this three bet. And I think he's gonna have a lot of good hands. Pocket jacks, pocket tens, pocket queens, pocket kings, ace king, ace queen, hands like this. I think he's relatively condensed to pretty strong hands here. The original preflop razor does fold. So we go heads up to jack nine, three, two diamonds. That's a pretty good flop. Ace of diamonds in hand for us. We go for a bet of 300. 700. Now the hijack does something pretty odd. He raises it to $700. I think he can have pocket nines sometimes, pocket jacks. Otherwise, I think we're in really good shape here. Hands like king, queen of diamonds are available or King 10 of diamonds, but I doubt he's got a hand like King 10 of diamonds. I don't see a ton of value in re-raising him on this flop. So I go ahead and call. Turn is a nine of clubs. That's a very good turn because it makes pocket nines almost impossible. I check and the opponent quickly checks back. Good sign we're ahead of everything but pocket jacks and it's a queen of diamonds river. Actually a pretty good river. So now we gotta decide if we wanna go for value or not. I think we definitely do. But I do not like my bet size here. I bet $1,000. I think this is way, way too big. I think I should've gone for a block of like 500 or $600 at most, targeting hands like Ace Jack, or maybe even sometimes a weird rivered queen. And the hijack gets out of the way, so we get the best of him once again in this hand. 
we've been spot dead and card dead for about two and a half hours, folding every single hand when we find King Queen of Diamonds and raises to $55 over one limit. The hijack's a pro, he's gonna three bet to 155. He wants to play for more. Cutoff's gonna cold call. He is the tricky, tough businessman from the hand earlier where we bluffed our 10 nine of hearts against his king three of hearts and got it through. And the under the gun player is gonna cold call. If it's good for 10, it's good for 155. And now the action returns to us. I think we've got a hand which either wants to call or four bet. I think it's a majority call. The price is really, really good. Want to give some respect to the pro. So that's what I go ahead and do here. Rather than trying to four bet and take it down now, I'm just going to take a price, try to hit a flop. And it's a pretty good one. It's jack, 10, two, two hearts and one diamond. We check it to the pro. He fires 275 into three opponents. Certainly an indication of immense strength continuing to see bet on a board this wet with this many opponents. Cutoff's gonna think about it for quite a while here before eventually finding the fold. Under the gun quickly folds. It's back on us. Raising doesn't seem very good to me here. So I decided to take a price with this open-ended straight draw and backdoor flush draw. Two of clubs on the turn, one of the worst cards in the deck for us. And we check it over to the pro once again. 775. And he's gonna fire once again, 775. And I'm just gonna quickly fold here. I think we're gonna continue on a lot of diamond turns, certainly a king or a queen, and then an ace or a nine, which makes us a straight. Occasionally we wanna have folds, and I think this deuce of clubs is just the card to do that. All right, guys, end of the session here in Black Hawk, Colorado. I do wanna give you guys a little bit of lay of the land. You saw that this game was quite good tonight. The session was really good. But I do want to explain what it's like out here and what I'm seeing. This session is not indicative of what Blackhawk is. 510 does run on Thursdays and Fridays. I have played in many games since I've gotten here about three weeks ago that were not very good. I have been unable to get what I would call good vlog footage, basically a series of break-even sessions where I don't lose any big hands and I don't win any big hands. It's just kind of boring. So basically, I'm on a several-week break even stretch before what you are just seeing here, which which was a nice win. I don't wanna make it seem like I just show up and I just win every time I play because that isn't at all what happens. In this situation today, I ran really, really good. My bluffs worked, picked up aces more times than anybody could ever dream of. I mean, the other thing that you need to know about the eco up here is Denver is a city that a lot of young people want to move to. People from California, people from New York, they've got good jobs. I'll say this, at the 510 stake in Denver, yeah, sure, they have wrecks. I mean, that's why the game runs. You get a lot of these, like, software engineer kids, mid-late 20s. These guys are, are good recreational players. They don't sit around and, and study poker all day and all night, but they can really play. It's basically a one-trick pony up here in Blackhawk. Monarch is the only place to play and play bigger. This is the spot. So all the best players, whether it be Rex or pros, are all consolidating into one place, which is not something that happens in LA. You know, people are bike, people are commerce, people are gardens, people are hustler. I do really, really like the dealers and the staff. They're doing a great job in there. I think it's a really well-run room for a small room. I've played all over the country, props to them. But anyway, it was great to run awesome. I always say this, when you get pocket aces, a lot of times in a session, you're either gonna win a lot or lose a lot because you're just putting in so much money. Uh, today it worked out, they didn't go down once. Final numbers, in for 2,500, out for 74.37. Nearly a 5K profit today, that's a hell of a day. I'm digging that, <laughs> so. Uh, if you enjoyed this uh, sun run uh, up here in the frigid temperature up here in Black Hawk, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment down below. I love chatting with people, whether it's trolls or hand history, strategy, whatever. Put it out there. I really appreciate all of you guys watching. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Live King out.